Still does. That's close enough, Inspector. We're not wired. I'm sorry, but a man in my position survives by taking every precaution. You've information for us. No, you already have the information. All the names and dates are inside your head. What you want, what you really need, is a story. A story can be true or false. I leave such judgments to you, Inspector. Our story begins, as these stories often do, with a young up-and-coming politician. He's a deeply religious man and a member of the Conservative Party. He's completely single-minded and has no regard for the political process. The more power he attains, the more obvious his zealotry, and the more aggressive his supporters become. Eventually, his party launches a special project in the name of national security. At first, it's believed to be a search for biological weapons, and it's pursued without regard to its cost. However, the true goal of this project is power, complete and total hegemonic domination. The project, however, ends violently. But the efforts of those involved are not in vain, for a new ability to wage war is born from the blood of one of the victims. Imagine a virus, the most terrifying virus you can, and then imagine that you and you alone have the cure. But if your ultimate goal is power, how best to use such a weapon? It's at this point in our story that along comes a spider. He is a man seemingly without a conscience for whom the ends always justify the means, and it is he who suggests that their target should not be an enemy of the country, but rather the country itself. Three targets are chosen to maximize the effect of the attack, a school, a tube station, and a water treatment plant. Several hundred die within the first few weeks. That Three Waters has, in fact, been contaminated. Authorities are attempting to control its deadly spread. Sent a wave of destruction throughout the underground. Fueled by the media, fear and panic spread quickly, fracturing and dividing the country until at last the true goal comes into view. Before the St. Mary's crisis, no one would have predicted the results of the election that year. No one. And then not long after the election, lo and behold, a miracle. Some believed it was the work of God himself, but it was a pharmaceutical company controlled by certain party members that made them all obscenely rich. A year later, several extremists are tried, found guilty and executed while a memorial is built to canonize their victims. But the end result, the true genius of the plan was the fear. Fear became the ultimate tool of this government, and through it, our politician was ultimately appointed to the newly created position of High Chancellor. The rest, as they say, is history. Can you prove any of this? Why do you think I'm still alive? Right. We'd like to take you into protective custody, Mr. Rookwood. Oh, I'm sure you would. But if you want that recording, You'll do what I tell you to do. You put Creedy onto 24-hour surveillance. When I feel safe that he can't pick his nose without you knowing, I'll contact you again. Till then, cheerio. Rookwood. Why didn't you come forward before? What were you waiting for? Well, for you, Inspector. I needed you.